Actually, it's a bit cold here, and uh, Carlos Marin told me today I was getting old. He says, you're losing air like I do. I was a bit insulted, but I, I wear caps, and uh, I'm going to go along uh, talking gambling, but first I'll wear, wear, wear a, a horse racing cap to start. Uh, basically, um, well, you probably know I joined Links in 96, uh, I was there for a little while. Um, I joined, I think Doug came to get me because I knew about horse racing. Uh, uh, I've been into it for quite a while, uh, and, and I certainly knew photo finish. Um, I operated my first photo finish cameras will be 50 years in June. So it's uh, just almost as old as uh, Tom Jennings, actually. So. <laughs> So uh, I, I came to that, and when I left the company, uh, Ed and Doug asked me if I could uh, keep looking after gambling in markets for a little while because I knew them, it was natural to me, it was easy, and I said, sure, I, I do that. We talked about a year, I think we're seven years down the road, and I'm still doing it, still enjoying it, actually. And a bit later, Doug asked if I could take over uh, motorsports, and, um, and then look a little bit into this key. Actually, I'm, I'm a passionate about links cameras, I'm passionate about motion analysis through time. And, and what better tool than the uh, photo finish camera to do that? And uh, this camera is amazing, I think. Um, so basically, these are the three markets I've been uh, most interested in, too, and looked after. Um, in many cases, actually, uh, we may have lacked expertise in the market, uh, in some cases, with our distributors, so that's why I could help a little bit. And uh, I'd like to start by looking at what technologies have been used traditionally or are being used uh, in these markets. You will notice to start that there's a sad face here and we have smiles out there. The sad face is because uh, gambling sports are kind of declining. They've been a strong market for links at, for links at that time. They're still going pretty good. There's still potential out there to go get. Um, on the long run, they're declining in most any market except a number of them, like Russia, for example. Uh, China, if China, China uh, mainland uh, do not allow gambling, and we know that Asian people, particularly Chinese, they just love gambling, and uh, it's, it's, it can be huge, it can be big, big numbers uh, when it comes to that, and we think that in China, most certainly when they allow it, there will be a number of tracks of new places. So there are new tracks opening all the time, but uh, certainly not in North America, it's exactly the opposite. Um, Basically, let me, this was made for a Mac, so it's back to navigate with the, uh, for each of these sports, we'll be looking at the different uh, technologies that are being used in, uh, with the cameras, for cells, transponders, and tracking. Of course, green being that uh, predominant, and uh, yellow, occasional, and the reddish tracking there means almost never there are reasons for that. Uh, cameras have been traditional in horse racing. They've been a uh, must. You need you need something. There's money on the table. Uh, people have won them. Uh, they even use like uh, they use them for the finish of the race for the chart as well. Basically, when you come to the end of the race, they need to know um, the time of each horse. But they also have visual references, which are called lengths or margins. So they create the chart and the chart uh, with the uh, photo finish camera. Uh, that's a very interesting story, actually. It's a highly regulated world, the gambling world. But there's, if there's one thing, one place, where they don't agree, and it varies a lot across the world, is the way they do the chart, or, or they do that part of the timing. Every country, every region, every do it their own way. And uh, Lynx is actually, by now, the only product that can really adapt to do it properly wherever we go. It's, it's, it's really, really neat the way it can be done when it comes to this. Uh, it usually requires, depending on the size of tracks, more than one camera. You may have a main, a backup, a reverse angle. A smaller tracks will go with a single camera, case B. But it's a main technology that's, that's being used. Who's our competition in horse racing with cameras? Uh, well, we dominate the market in some parts of the world, like North America by all means, Australia, New Zealand, which are very strong, uh, and Asia as well uh, these days. Uh, Europe is a mix. Uh, Omega is still pretty strong, actually, in uh, Europe and the Middle East. Uh, they, uh, they are in the UK as well. 
uh, algae does penetrate a few places where people really don't have money or if they haven't heard about it. And I hate to say that some may still have not heard about us. It should not be the case. But um, in some of the countries, they do uh, take some of the place. Timetronics, we hear very little about. And Plusmic is a Japanese company that has a, uh, another model, which is basically in Japan and a little bit in California. Um, now, we'll talk about the market. Let me just go back to the... Photocells, as technology, have been traditional and been used for sectional timing around the track. You only get the time of the first horse uh, differently depending on the kind of uh, sports we're looking at. Would it be at every 400 meters uh, from the start or every 400 meters back from the finish or 200 meters sometimes back from the finish, depending where you go in the world? Um, basically, um, that's still being used and will keep being used. It's not being used everywhere. Um, uh, Microgate has a very nice system for that, but the majority of systems actually are kind of in-house. The market for horse racing varies a little bit of where you go in the world, but uh, it's a market that's been serviced. It's been, most of the tracks don't own their equipment. They get service providers. I mean, it's true in North America. In North America, there are four dominating service providers who do about all the tracks. Uh, give you an idea, one of them own about 140 cameras. Uh, in Australia, New Zealand, it's mainly service providers. Uh, we have Graham Brook here, one of our resellers, and one of our great distributors. I think Graham has to be, if I'm not mistaken, the biggest owner of lens cameras. I think he owns about 150 now in his service business. Uh, but they service, uh, Graham, to me if I'm wrong, they service over 250 tracks, right? So they, uh, they may have uh, fixed installations some places, and they may move with equipment in other places. So a lot of our customers have been from different countries, people that were already, we try to respect the market structure and, and work with the people that were involved already. Doesn't mean, by the way, and I'll talk about that soon, uh, that you could not be involved, many of you. Actually, we could use many of you. There are still countries we have not penetrated as well as we could. And, uh, we certainly uh, would. But these service providers, uh, it's the case of Brooke, uh, for example, they, they do their own uh, sectional timing systems most of the time. Transponders, very occasional, exceptional actually. Uh, great for sectional timing and chart. Um, the competition has been mainly, well, there's not really, my labs have tried a lot. Uh, for years, and they just could not penetrate the market. People don't like to dig to put a loop under the track. Other people have come with other type of differential to try to get it, and it just doesn't sell easy. Uh, tracking is, uh, I could let Ed talk about that. It's not very practical for racetracks. The race, these, these facilities can be huge. I mean, they're, they're very, very large to cover. Uh, they're complex. Uh, it gets to it, make, it makes for very very expensive systems, and although tracking has been the holy grail, the whole racing industry has been looking for that forever. Uh, when you comes to talk about money, they, they don't do it. So there is one player in there that has some success right now, uh, but their system is neither uh, real time data or real accurate data. Uh, but you see, that it's being used for TV mostly, so that you can put some information. But the data they put up is about three seconds late on what's really happening on the track. So as long as horses are all moving together, it looks good. But the moment they start like changing, it's not so good. So it's not like a uh, a great uh, image or it's not great for for uh, tracking. So basically, this is a market where technologies uh, are mainly cameras. Important. They can't go without cameras. Uh, and our cameras are clearly the best to do that. And I would say one thing I'd like to say about our cameras, we often talk about our cameras, and somebody was asking me a few days ago, what's the difference between your camera and Alki's camera and, and Timetronic's camera? And, and I have to bring it back all the time. It's not only the camera. I mean, this, the software, Finish Links, is unbelievable. I mean, this, this is so capable of adapting to so many sports. Nobody needs to know everything that is in Finish Links. It's, it's quite difficult, actually, for anyone to know everything. But everybody will find the finish lines very easily what they need in any sport. It's, it's really, once you, you understand it, it's, it's such a great software. 
So that's where gambling is part. Let's move over to uh, motorsports. Uh, interesting about motorsports. Uh, it is, uh, has not been a uh, traditional market for cameras. They start to use them now, uh, but the, the main thing in motorsports has been transponder. And there is a domination. Uh, the transponder market. My labs is dominating this market. They were there early on. They provided pretty good services, and they hold the market pretty, pretty good. It's very difficult to to get through them. We're, we're getting there slowly. We're really like uh, uh, they have created their camera. We tried for them at the time to work with our camera. They bought one of our cameras. That's probably when they found that uh, transponders are not as accurate they claim to be. They claim to be. Uh, when you take a 10,000 lines per second camera and you put transponders, it's very interesting to, to see what happens. I actually saw, experience myself, uh, with a 10,000 lines per camera, same transponders, the same loop on two different decoders, uh, didn't read the same difference between the cars. And, and there are a number of things you can adjust with transponder, with the decoders for the sensitivity of transponder to increase sensitivity, lose resolution and things like that, people don't realize as much as they may say they're very accurate, it's all relative to the way the transponders are installed, to the way your loop is set, to the way your decoder is adjusted. Don't get me wrong, it's a great technology. It provides instant information for TV for all kind of purposes. Uh, you can create leaderboards, you can, it's, it's a great thing, but it's not very accurate. Cameras have been brought mainly uh, to uh, for tight finishes, for close finishes. It's still being seen as a secondary product, but the main, uh, the main groups are using it. Like we have F1 is using it, um, uh, Indy, uh, IRL, Indy Racing is using it. They were the first customers actually in 2003. Uh, they were sponsored by Tag Heuer, who paid that first camera at the time. Um, NASCAR is using it. Dorna from Motocross GP is using it. Um, who am I forgetting? Uh, a lot of the, uh, Italian Association of uh, Timers are using it uh, for power boats, they're using it for uh, all kind of motorsports. Uh, Italy is a bit different than the rest of the world when it comes to timing, there's a federation of timers, and so they use it extensively out there as well. So many of the major players are now using it, but still as a secondary product. Now the camera, and now again it's not the camera, it's the software, allows this camera to be used so intelligently. Uh, let me give you an idea, like NASCAR. Um, when we get data from transponders, as you know, most of you have imagine, we can actually uh, integrate this data into finish links, and we can put a line on the picture. So in motorsports, we, we capture every car on every lap, all the cars. That just goes through, goes through, goes through. And so you can put a line for every lap time that comes from the transponder. If any of you have ever been in a timing boot, um, and I should have changed caps now I'm talking about that. Uh, so losing my thoughts. Uh, if you've been in a, in a uh, timing boot, you would realize that uh, to get backups, you get a guy that's out there that may be a photo cell on the finish line, which goes to a chronometer. And somebody else is just taking numbers. They write down numbers and where they hear beat, beat, and there's no beat. They say, well, can we think this car is lacking a transponder? It's just ridiculous. Backup systems for timing, whatever level, even the very highest levels, are just ridiculous. You use a camera, you just have to observe the image, and you see the lines that are missing. And just as we do with uh, short track speed skating, for example, it's quite easy to embed a, a line if there's one missing on a car and to send it to the uh, main timing system who could accept it or reject it. NASCAR, what they've done, they went even further. Um, in NASCAR, every lap counts. I mean, on every lap of a race, uh, drivers acquire, teams acquire like uh, points toward the championship. Uh, previously, they had video cameras who were checking the laps and if two laps were really tight, they realized that the transponders were not always right, so they may ask the operator, would you back up that video, tell us that this car was really over this car. Well, with another piece of software we have that works with finish links, the remote control protocol, uh, they have uh, done their own tool, 
Now it's automatic. They don't have to do anything. So finish links is capturing every lap. And when you get to the finish line, if uh, two cars are tied to them so much, automatically their software asks finish links, send me the picture of what happened at this point in time. And they see immediately for themselves from the from finish links what's happening. So as you can see, when I say that that software is powerful, it really is actually. It's really, it's amazing. It's, it's uh, what you can do with it. Uh, it. It evolved also. A lot of people don't realize that. How many automatic features have been enhanced over the years uh, where you can really make auto capture and automatic photo cells to be quite accurate. I can relate that in horse racing. We use uh, more and more of the automatic photo cell on the finish line and I, I have places where we're 100 meters from the finish line and we're almost always 100, within 100 of a second with the picture. Uh, and and uh, so it's all a matter of sensitivity, being able to adjust. And, uh, and Doug and Kirk have done like, great work over the years to really enhance the software to be able to be used in advanced uh, manners like that. Now these ports happen to be sports where we can use features like that, but you should all try to be more aware of such features because they could be used sometimes. You could actually push way beyond what competition can flip, can, can come close to do. That's why I mentioned. So, so transponder, traditional cameras in motorsports, mostly as uh, for finish and backup timing system, information system as well. Uh, you can use a camera scope on the finish line and in pit lanes. Uh, who's our competition? Um, in this case, actually, there's not my laps. is the only ones who really uh, try. Well, Tag Heuer, by all means. Um, but my laps don't really have much success. And Tag Heuer by Lynx would be competition to Lynx and more sports when it comes to these cameras. Um, photo cells. Uh, have been used, are still being used, um, not as much, not, not as necessary. They used to be photo cell on the finish line so that they could get that time in case something happens. Uh, but that's basically the way it's being used in, in, uh, in uh, motorsports. And here again, well, mainly microdate, tag wear, and alky photo cells have been used. Tracking, for the same reason I said horse racing, there are tracking systems that uh, are. Uh, being used out there, like uh, some companies like Sports Vision. Uh, I mean, they, there's been systems that have been used combining like GPS information along with uh, camera telemetry. It's very advanced, and again, Ed to, to could tell you more about these systems. But they're rather exceptional. You won't find them everywhere. They're, they're complicated to install. They're expensive. Uh, it is not something that uh, we necessarily be interested in. The next market I have here, which actually, you know, the hat I should put here, the microgate hat, I guess, but Federico doesn't want to send me one. So, it's just too bad. I mean, it's, uh, it's uh, uh, FI Sports are, are very much a thing of microgate as our, our strategic partner, actually. Uh, they're in scheme, this is one of their traditional market, as well as tag orders has been into that. Algae have that. They're the three main competitors out there. So why do I talk about uh, uh, FIS Sports here with uh, transponders and cameras? And well, cameras are new. They're new to FIS. And actually, Federico could tell us more about that because he's in the committee at PFIS uh, about cameras. It's very new to them. Uh, didn't used to be there. It is still a secondary system. It's still as a backup. It's used as a backup system. It is still considered as something that can be used in case they have, like, whatever reason they may have to find a tight finish. Uh, to me, honestly, I think it should be a main system. But that's that's another discussion. They, it should work together with the photo cell systems that have been used so far. Uh, I think it's going to come over time. And the reason I put a smile, I think. Will be the market will open up with this. People will realize over time the usefulness of cameras. The more they see pictures, um, the more they realize. I think you have one uh, that Ed uh, used there at the tag or finish. Um, they're really great. They have been, they've been used in uh, cross country skiing uh, for years. Um, so, still secondary in FI sport, but it's coming. 
it's used at the finish line, the finish line sorry, uh, as a backup system. Uh, we have seen someone lately also use uh, a, a uh, identifying scanner at the start, uh, connected to this at the finish, uh, so that they could identify that uh, the start like was produced properly. It seems like there's there are contests sometimes and things like that. So our system, there's room for it to grow. Uh, we count very much, I guess, on Microgate as our main partner in this field. And, and I would tell you that most of you, if you're in a country where there is ski or ski sports, you should get close to Microgate on that. They could certainly support you. They're the experts on this field for us. We don't know that, that field very, very well. Um, and we will support them and develop and enhance the cameras and the software so that it can do as many things as possible. But uh, uh, they could certainly, and you could get uh, these systems from us, like maybe packages down the road that would include both Microgate and Lynx products. But uh, they're your expert reference when it comes to this. Uh, I really encourage that you talk to Federico, to Luca. Federico is a busy man, hard to get a hold of. But uh, Luca will certainly be happy to, uh, and they're around here, so they'll be able to, to talk with you. Transponders. Um, are used in some discipline of the FIS. Um, by the way, when you talk about disciplines, I mean, FIS, so that you understand what sports we're talking about, and you go to this map here. And there's, there's quite a few. If you go from alpine skiing to cross country to snowboarding, and you look at the different uh, disciplines there, uh, that's information I'd be happy to share with you if you want, because we have notes there on every of these sports on your time, what's being done with them. Um, and uh, so you, you have all of the FIS uh, uh, sports here. And uh, there's, there's, there's room here. There's room to use our products. There's used room to expand, to take more of the market uh, together between uh, Lynx and our strategic partner. Let me get back to So uh, transponders being used in certain disciplines. I said like cross country, the get lab signal information, continuous information. Uh, one of our uh, strategic partners using that actually is uh, Hegel in Norway. Uh, they're pretty much a leader. They, they've done Olympics. They've done uh, so. They're they're really uh, uh, knowledgeable. They also have, by the way, the competitors in this case are not only my labs and Tag Order, but Hegel has their own system for that. Okay, and they they have their own system for a number of things. So they they uh, have their markets there. Their uh, but mostly. The transponders. Photocells are by all means photocells and chronometers. The traditional systems and still the predominant systems and will stay like that most likely uh, for finish time and intermediate times. Uh, the chronometers that are made like uh, by companies like Microgate really like will give you quick information that can be sent to TV as things go. So you've all watched like downhill skiing or, or winter Olympics and you can see information flow. Well, this is all like uh, things that are possible uh, uh, for you to get into if you're in a ski country where Microgate does not already have a part, or maybe even if they do, maybe they're not happy to talk to them. And uh, certainly we're uh, looking at that. Tracking is exceptional. Uh, we've seen, we've heard about like uh, some teams using uh, GPS systems to train, um, but uh, it wouldn't be very good for timing if I'm not mistaken. It's mainly for training purposes. Not easy again. Well, of course, with GPS, it's more easy. But it's uh, uh, otherwise, it's not very easy to have a real tracking system um, for uh, this market. Now, if I look at the, uh, you may wonder how much of a market there is. Um, and when we talk about gambling markets. There are a number of sports. Uh, and then you may not have in all of your region or in all of your countries, but uh, thoroughbred racing is the most dominant. Trotters in some countries is very, very strong. Quarter horse and match racing are very similar. Uh, it's like sprint races a little bit. They look like uh, Western horses, if you, if you wish. They, they just sprint. These guys do the same, but this is much smaller tracks. In South America, actually, there's a lot of market for this. Uh, and, and Mexico as well. And we don't grab as much of the market as we'd like to grab yet. Uh, it's, uh, it's been like a, uh, we're trying to find the magical formula for that. 
Uh, Greyhound is uh, quite popular in some parts of the world, like uh, certainly is in Australia, uh, in America. It's also uh, uh, having a hard time, and it's declining in a lot of places. And, uh, it's funny, Australia is a place where it's not declining yet. It's, there's a very, Australian museum had a very, very strong uh, culture of racing. People just like to go there, just like, uh, and it's still, it's still going strong. So I, I think I mentioned like uh, uh, some markets are a nation. So you should look at your markets. I was surprised actually when I did this. I think I may have. Um, let me look here. Here's when I was surprised when I did. Uh, I'll look at here. Oh, no, I don't have it here. Let me see. Now, one thing I want to tell you about this, we have a lot of information. This is the configurations. I'm sorry, I don't have my map with the countries. We do have a map of pretty much all over the world, of all the tracks, of all the facilities. And in many cases, who the people would be, that would be more. So that's certainly something I would be happy to work with many of you. I mean, I can stretch only so thin. I cannot contact all these people, get to them easily. Uh, Ed mentioned this morning about the language thing. Language is one thing, the culture is, language is part of the culture. You're from your own countries, you understand the culture. Uh, when you talk to your people, you, it's different. You talk to people from different cultures talking together, it might go a lot like, quicker, they advance a lot quicker. We can support you, but many of you, uh, if they came to us and, and said, hey, that's a market that we're interested in too. Um, I've engaged for the longest time, and I guess we'll get to it someday, that we need to create collateral marketing material for that. It's not bad will, it's just been like uh, lacking time to do it. We need to do it so that you can go out and, and try all the markets out there. Uh, we could certainly differentiate ourselves from com competitors because we, by far, have the most knowledge in these fields. And we could support you when it comes to this. Like any of you that think there may be interest, what I was going to show about the markets, and, and I just said I don't have that map up right now, and the different countries, I was Czech Republic. I would never have known there were 13 horse tracks out there. And uh, it's amazing. Uh, it's, um, and I don't think we have any at this time. Um, we, uh, Lars came up uh, during the break actually and, and thought there were four racetracks in Norway. Well, actually, I trained 28 people. I think there are 14 racetracks, if I'm not mistaken, in Norway right now. Um, and, and they mostly all used links except one at this time. Um, there's, uh, it's been done through with other, like uh, uh, Hegel, who are also in Norway, uh, who have been in close contact with these people. We do dominate the market out there, but a lot of countries we still don't, and, and there's room there's room to grow. Uh, Brian will tell you there's 600 tracks in Australia. I don't know about all of them, but I, I thought there were about 600 in the world, actually. And uh, uh, many of them being smaller in Australia, most likely. I probably don't have them in my, in my account. But uh, we still have room to grow. And we do the major tracks. We do major facilities, just as in... Uh, Motorsports, we have the major bodies. Um, <clears throat> bodies, major sports, by the way. Same here, we do have a lot of information about them. Here's types of racing, sanctioning of motorsports. Um, you have automobile here, motorcycle, and boat racing. And these are just type of racing here, like Formula Car, Stock Car, Road, Drag, Drifting. Sprint, midget, dirt, rally, off-road, truck, curb, autocross, uh, land speed racing, and um, I go over here, the same thing. And if I go to sanctioning bodies, FIA being the main sanctioning body in, uh, in Europe, in uh, ACC US and the uh, United States, um, what you will find is that any of, for any of these, so much easier with a Mac, it, it balances itself automatically. 
They have rules and regulations uh, that are different, that vary. <clears throat> and um, if we study that together, if we look how they work, what they do, we can more easily bring solutions to them. But even beyond these, these main bodies, whenever you hit any of the, of the lines, they also have other sanctioning bodies. There's a lot out there, but we, we have that information. We have that information. Um, it's all together, and, and, and if these are fields that you're interested in, certainly fields where we can work together with you at trying to get to these people. Um, Characteristics uh, in, in motorsports so far, the main bodies, we found they're very dependent. As much as we managed to sell it, they're all like that. I think all of them. Uh, IRL, F1, NASCAR, uh, Dorna, all these people are hard to get a hold of. They know everything, they know what they want. Uh, they're also very, very uh, much on transponders. Um, it takes a while really to get them to start using everything properly. NASCAR may be a bit different. NASCAR actually wants to become the kingpins of North America in timing, and, and they may uh, when it comes to North America. But there's a lot of room for expansion. Somebody who would want to do things right in, uh, in Europe could do well. Uh, think of Germany, there's room in Germany, things we could do in Germany. Uh, so if these are fields that you think are of interest to you, that you would like help, we certainly love to hear you and work with you at KSP. Um, if you prefer that uh, we work direct with these as the opportunities arise, I mean, it's, we, we can do that as well, and we can work together with you whenever we feel that, uh, that there's a good chance that uh, we team better together. Um, so um, basically, um, certainly that there is a lot of markets out there. We have to bring you more information on it. Um, I engage you do that. I'm, I'm going to work with Charles and Ed, and uh, we've been talking about that. You have to have packages, you have to have information with which you can go to these people and could certainly help. Um, but basically, it gives you a, a bit of an overview of these markets. Um, and how all that, they're, again, their governing bodies, their rules, their, 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 but our products adapt very, very well to all of these three markets. I'm ahead, right? No? How about that? <laughs> I don't think I have much more to say since there's no uh, question uh, period. I will be here only for, uh, I'm leaving very early. We do, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, I think I may have pictures here, let me see. Yeah, by the way, something I can say, uh, in horse racing, as much as motorsports, uh, these are applications very demanding. I mean, they're high speed, low light. Uh, you really have to use the camera. You learn to use the camera to optimally. Uh, Doug's going to be speaking tomorrow about how to get better pictures. I'm sure he's going to touch on that. Um, and, and whenever you get fields like that that are difficult, this is something else where you should not, um, that you should always ask for support if you're not sure about how to do it. Once you get the tricks, you'll do it easily. But um, they, they really, Ask a lot on the cameras. Let me see if I can go to. No, that's going to work. I was saying I'm leaving early. Where we develop? That's no. Old that's small center. Sorry. Old enter. I'll enter this. Oh, you're out of luck. Out of luck. Yeah. Sorry. I was going to show you. We developed for uh, Monster Jam Racing with Fell Production a system. These people have tried everything. These are the big trucks. I don't know if you've ever seen them. The wheels are about that that high. I think you can make it. So we developed a solution for these people that uh, used finish links, uh, used result TV, and, uh, and a, a, a timing and scoring uh, software as well, uh, which we, we designed especially for them. It's a complete solution, all integrated together. They're very happy because they tried so many things that everybody told them that that's going to work, that's going to work, that's going to work. 
They called me to ask for a demonstration. They said, well, they don't do free demonstration. You're going to have to pay our expenses. They said, no, we got enough of that. We've done that with so many people. So I was sure it was going to work. I went on my Sorry. own cost. That's not even a real thing. No. That's not a and uh, they liked the demonstration, and uh, they just let the system develop. And here's a market that uh, will expand. I mean, they have, like, uh, they have a lot of competitions going in parallel. Uh, and, and many people, including Philip Kovic, talked about customer service. Customer service has been, it was smart engineering at the base at Lynx. Very good customer service when I got there, I noticed that. It's really like there was a lot to learn about that. And Ed later brought marketing to the equation. Uh, customer service, listening to customers, trying to really understand what they want, rather than imposing on them technology. And some of our competitors have been arguing with our, or in our uh, uh, with our customers. And one thing I notice is that if you do it right, if you bring the right technology, if you listen to them, uh, if you serve them properly and you do good after sales service, you never lose these customers again. I'm sure like Philip could, could say, so I, I don't think you lost too many uh, customers for it since the beginning, right? And another thing about Matt's port, you said Ed, earlier about verticals. Another vertical they jumped into, horse racing. I, I, I met them in uh, 97. They didn't know about horse racing. We had an opportunity in France. Uh, someone we met uh, and uh, went to Philip and they learned. They learn and they're very good at it now. We still work together. Every so often there's like special demands, special things, and we work at the, but they have all the basic knowledge to support this market, to sell directly in this market. It's clearly feasible. Federico, I mean, has been working with, uh, we had somebody that we had met earlier on in, uh, in Italy who was a specialist in this field, but he's been working with these people. And, and uh, so there are a number of you that really already do it, that have gone in this vertical that understood uh, how to, but all of them, all the people who did that, one thing they had in common, they listened to that market, and they served that market as, as for what it was like wanting. They did not impose on the market, and, and that's pretty important. I think it's at the base of what Ed does with marketing, listening, 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 listening to the customer. They tell you what they want. They tell you how it's called. They tell you really, and if you know how to do that, then you can design what they need. It's true in the field. When you sell a product, please don't dump it on the customers. I don't think any of you do that, but make sure you follow up. Um, as of lately, I'm going to my time now. As of lately, I, I've been using uh, something like King Viewer. Uh, there are a lot of other products out there. Amazing. I, I can tell you that uh, places like in uh, South America, where we sold systems and they wanted to upgrade systems, they say, well, come down, we want to see you, we want you to spend the time here, we want to, and they would have had to pay like five to $7,000 between the airfares, between the hotels, between my time and everything, and I'd say, listen, you have the knowledge, we can do all of that online. And between Skype and Team Viewer, uh, where they would have spent, otherwise five or $7,000, they end up paying five to $700. We do it anywhere between three hours to two days, depending on what happens. But it works, and you can support people. I can tell you that major circuits, like Dubai Racing Club, when they race, if I'm at my desk, I can see their computers are on. I could jump in at a time. It happened that they call me and they say, hey, we got a problem. I think I do click, and I see their, their thing. In Brazil, that as well. I mean, they, they we installed the system, and they said, we're not sure about the number of things. Well, I had the system going on a, on, on a monitor all afternoon. I was doing something else. I was just keeping an eye on it, and I could I jump in. These things are things you can do today to better support your customer. And, and, uh, but you've got to be close to them. They love it. I mean, they'll never drop you. Once you do that, they'll never drop you. And that's part of getting to that market dominance that was talking about. That's another factor. Better in serve them. We differentiate ourselves like another way from competition. And that's pretty unique in this field, I think. So, okay. It's pretty interesting. I forgot to say, uh, did you notice? Did you notice? This is a laser. Laser can be harmful. Now, did you notice, like, when Ed started talking about Tag Lawyer, Federico was very quick to bring in a laser so he could shoot that Tag Lawyer. <laughs> <laughs> We will be having time for you to meet with the experts. Um, I think it's Jason next.
Oh, really? Yes. Right. Yeah. Um, Jason? Yeah. Um, we're now going to hear about regatta sports. And if you look in your folder, you will find in the section um, marked after athletics, anyway, it's the one after athletics, there is a rowing packages document. And you'll also find in the little folder at the front of the 